Inflation is a good thing. That's what we're hearing from the Biden administration spokespeople. Is that really true? Or is this just the Biden administration playing CYA? That's what we'll talk about today on The Sovereign States. Welcome to The Sovereign States. My name is Brian. Appreciate you checking out the channel. If you like what you see, check out some of my other videos. Uh, hit that red subscribe button, leave a like on the video, and leave a comment. Love to hear what you have to say about the topic today. All right, inflation. So, inflation is incredibly high right now, right now compared to normal times. Now, in the United States, we have the reserve currency, and prices have been relatively stable for quite a while. Uh, inflation is typically hovering around 2 to 3% or so, give or take, uh, with a similar economic growth rate, which tends to absorb a lot of the impact uh, on prices for regular people. Last month, the Consumer Price Index uh, rose 6.8% year over year. That's the largest increase since 1982. Now, the Biden administration says that inflation is good for everybody. You'll see. Just keep buying stuff. The economy will do well, take off like a rocket, and everything will be great. But is that really true? Is it really true that inflation is good for everybody? Well, it's good for some people, but it's not really good for everybody. I'm not really convinced that Pete Buttigieg or Jen Psaki or anybody else actually know what inflation is. <laughs> I really, I'm not, I mean, maybe they do. I'm not convinced that they actually know what it is, they don't, don't know what causes it, and what impact it actually has on regular folks. See, these people don't live in the real world. They live in fantasy land. They're insulated from all this. Most of them are rich, and they have no clue what inflation actually does to an everyday American. Now, inflation, as you all know, I'm sure, is the rise in prices due to, among other things, the devaluation of of the money of a society, in our case, the dollar. This is caused by many things, but namely an overabundance of those dollars or whatever the currency is. The more you have of something, the less it is worth, the less valuable it is. That's just basic economic common sense. It's supply and demand. So the more dollars we have floating around out there, the less they're going to be worth. Now, there's more to it than that, I know. I mean, I'm not an economist, so I'm not going to, I can't go into all the uh, granular details. There's plenty of other people out there that can do that. But in a nutshell, if you just keep printing money all day long and keep expanding the supply of money in a society, it's going to be worth less. You're going to have inflation. Now, who benefits from inflation? I mean, clearly the Biden administration is saying that inflation is a good thing. Well, to whom? Well, it's a good thing to Wall Street. Wall Street really benefits from inflation. How? Well, easy money, that is the easy monetary policy from the Fed, the 0% the, uh, interest rates and, and so forth, allows them to borrow money with essentially no risk. And when there's no risk tied to it, they're not going to be careful with it, and which allows them to make wild, crazy bets, crazy speculation, in the marketplace, which actually doesn't produce anything. It actually doesn't go into building factories and development of new products, research and development, stocking shelves. It doesn't do any of that. It's just wild speculative bets on crazy things that they would never actually put their money in if it actually cost them something. If there was risk tied to it, they would never do that. But as it stands right now, they can do that and the upside for them is that they can make a ton of money for themselves on these wild bets. The downside is that they lose it. Well, they have to pay it back, but they're paying it back at essentially zero interest, and they can just borrow more to pay back the original, again, at zero interest. This is why they had so much money in mortgage-backed securities and CDOs and CDO squares and all these other crazy derivatives that are just ridiculous in the 2008 financial crisis. It didn't cost them anything. I mean, it ended up costing them in the end, but that's only because something happened that 
hardly anyone predicted. Some people did. Michael Burry predicted it. Peter Schiff predicted it. But very few people thought that could ever happen. It's a moral hazard. But Wall Street loves inflation because it means that borrowing money is very cheap, low risk for them. Who else benefits? Anyone who's in debt. Anyone who's in a lot of debt, companies and banks that are levered up like 50 to 1 or something, they're, they love inflation. Why? Well, because as the dollar, the value of the dollar goes down, their debt isn't going up. Debt's not tied to inflation, so if you're if you owe a hundred dollars, but the today's dollars are worth half what they were worth when you borrowed the money, you're only paying back in real value half of what you owe. You're still paying back a hundred total dollars, but the dollars are worth half as much. So they lo- people who are in debt big time, they love it. Well, what does that encourage? Well, that encourages people to get more levered up. It encourages frivolous behavior, unsafe behavior, crazy risks with debt. Who else? Government. Government loves inflation. They love it. Because they can just keep borrowing money all day long from the Fed because the Fed buys government bonds, essentially funding all this stupid crap the government's doing all the time. And they could use those funds to do political favors for their constituents or this special interest group or that special interest group, which then fills their campaign coffers, which then allows them, well, increases the likelihood that they stay in office. You want to talk about corruption. That's corruption. It's just this circular uh, flow of money from the Fed to the government to the special interest group and then to the campaign coffers and then back and on and on we go. Who else benefits? Rich people. Why do rich people benefit? It's not that they like inflation necessarily. They do if they're in debt. But inflation doesn't hurt them because they don't have their uh, money in liquid assets. They don't have it in dollars. They have their money in real estate, in stocks and bonds and hard assets that, for the most part, are going to rise in value as inflation soars. So they're insulated from it. They have hedges against it. Cryptocurrency is supposed to be one of those. Now all the rich people are getting in it when it was a joke when it first started. Uh, Gold and silver and other precious metals is another one. Real estate's a big one. Now, who does inflation not benefit? Poor people. People on fixed incomes. The disabled. You know, all those vulnerable people that the government, especially the left, claims that they care about so much. They don't, by the way. Um, Not in any real terms, anyway. Uh, The thing is, those people, if they really cared about the poor, the disabled, people on fixed incomes, the elderly, they would get inflation under control and they would recognize it for what it is. Inflation is basically a regressive tax. You're reducing the value of the dollars earned, or in the case of the elderly, the dollars that they have in their retirement accounts, you're reducing the value of it, making it worth less. You're taxing the value of their money. Wages are never going to keep up with inflation if it goes too high. Why? Well, let's say you go in and ask for a raise. Let's say they give you 3%, but inflation is 6%. Well, that's not helping you at all. You're still losing. And they're never going to tie wages to inflation, particularly if it keeps climbing. Because if they do that, that means they're going to have to raise prices. If they raise prices, you're going to have to ask for more money for uh, for a bigger wage increase, which in turn will raise prices and so on and on and on we go. Inflation also it has detrimental effects on the economy as a whole. See, if you're a Keynesian economist or you're one of these people who thinks consumption is what drives the economy, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. That is not what causes the uh, economy to grow. There's always going to be consumption. Always. We don't want consumption. I mean, we want some. I mean, we're going to have some. It's always going to be there. Okay, you're always going to have consumption. 
You don't want overconsumption. I actually agree with the left on this. The left yelling and screaming all day long for environmental reasons or whatever about overconsumption. They're right. We shouldn't overconsume. Overconsumption is bad. So I agree with them on that. What they don't seem to say is the obvious, which is we want, for economic reasons anyway, underconsumption. We want people to live below their means. Why? Because the excess of their means can then be put into productive use. It can be used for investment and for savings and to build factories and to fund research. and That's where it all comes from. That's where capital comes from. It comes from savings. How do you save? Well, you have to underconsume. And we want... The rich people cannot fund everything. We don't have enough rich people to fund everything. We need everybody to save, everybody to underconsume, at least as much as possible. I recognize that some people can't do that. I mean, I, I, listen, I've been in that situation a lot. So, I mean, where I, I you know, I, I was living within my means, but I couldn't really save a whole lot. I mean, it's not, this is not foreign to, uh, to even Americans. So, but what we need more people to do is underconsume, stay out of debt, put your excess into uh, functional investments that will then drive economic growth. It's not consumption that drives economic growth. It is, uh, it is production. We need production. We need to make stuff. We need to invent new things. We need research and development. We need to grow businesses. We need people to start businesses. Well, how do you do that? You have to have capital. Where does that come from? Savings. Under consumption. But inflation discourages it. Why would you save money if a year from now it's going to be worth less than what it was? And, you're, and you know, if you stick it in a regular savings account, I mean, obviously your, your savings isn't going to grow there. Banks aren't going to give you any money for that. So what do you do? Well, inflation does the exact opposite. It encourages frivolous living, loose living. Now, check out this article from Bloomberg. For Americans shocked by inflation, Argentines have some advice. Now, there's nothing wrong with Argentina, okay? But do we re do we really want to have to mimic the choices they're forced to make because their inflation is so out of control in Argentina? Is that really the path we want to go down? That, but that's what this article is suggesting. Check it out. For many Americans, the sudden burst of inflation that has rocked the economy has been disoriented. Disorienting, excuse me. Consumer prices had been so stable for so long in the U.S. that the population finds itself a little rusty on basic inflationary uh, era tactics. They said we should turn to uh, the Argentines because they know how to do this because they've been dealing with high inflation for so long. Now, their inflation rate is about 50% year over year, which that's just, I don't know, <laughs> that's really high. Um, and they say here in Bloomberg, the product of decades of policy missteps that have destroyed confidence in the central bank. Yeah, we're doing the same crap. The only thing that protects us is that we have the reserve currency for the world. If that rug ever gets pulled out from under us, oh boy. Many principles uh, that shape the day-to-day -day habits of Argentine workers, consumers, and savers are still broadly ap applicable in the U.S. today. Here are the do's and don'ts. Spend your paycheck right away. Right. Don't save any of it. Overconsume. Right? In a high inflation economy, money that sits in the bank is losing value. Right. Each day, those $100 uh, on deposit buy a little bit less. As a result, many Argentines spend their paychecks as soon as they receive them, carting away a week's worth of groceries in a single shopping trip, etc., etc. You get the point. Don't save. Don't invest. You got to spend it all. Borrow lots of money. Borrow lots of money. We are levered up to the hilt. And you're telling us to borrow more. Now, why? Well, because inflation is good for borrowers. It's good for people who are in debt up to their eyeballs because what they're paying back is worth less than, what, when, than it was when they borrowed it. Don't hesitate to borrow money to finance some of those big purchases. If you can get a loan at a rate below inflation, something that's possible for many Americans today, go for it. Yeah, borrow money like crazy. Get all levered up. Yeah, that's wise. 
Shouldn't we be encouraging people not to go into debt? Debt is not good. It's necessary. Okay, credit in an economy is not necessarily a bad thing. But we should you shouldn't be trying to go into debt just because of inflation, especially. You know, negotiate a pay raise or two. Again, that's never gonna that's never gonna keep up no matter what you do. Buy inflation linked bonds. That might actually be a good idea. Buy homes and cars. Again, debt. Debt, 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 debt. Car, bad idea. Hey, if you have to finance the car, that's fine. We had to finance our car and our family. Uh, but if you can pay cash, that's even better. No one can do that right now because used cars cost almost as much as new cars. Thank you, inflation. Thanks, Biden. And Trump before you. And Obama before you. And Bush before you. And Clinton before you. And on, on, and on we go. Now, home, mm, maybe. That's not actually a bad idea. Okay, if you can afford a home, if you can afford to pay the monthly payments, fine. So, fundamentally, the Biden administration is wrong. If this is what we're having to resort to, if this is what we're talking about, the Biden administration is wrong. They're full of it. Look at what Larry Summers said. It's from the Daily Wire. Um, he was an, uh, He worked for the Obama administration. Okay, top Obama economist debunks Biden talking point about root causes of inflation. This is a Democrat. This is not a right winger. He also worked for Bill Clinton, by the way. A top Democrat economist castigated, good, good word there, the Biden administration for its denial over the root causes of soaring inflation. And then the labor statistics and so on. Everything's going up. Everything's getting more expensive. It's been, inflation's been of 5% for, the six, for six months in a row. On Monday, Larry Summers, who worked as Treasury Secretary under the Clinton administration and National Economic Council Director under the Obama administration, explained on social media that he cannot understand why White House officials cling to the idea inflation is caused by bottlenecks and will soon recede to normal levels. Maybe because they don't know what the hell they're talking about. Or maybe they're trying to cover it up to make themselves look good. Maybe they're playing political games. Could that be it, Larry? And of course he knows that. Summers also called it a long shot to believe that inflation will soon revert to levels anywhere near the Federal Reserve's targets. Man, that makes you feel all warm and fuzzy, doesn't it? According to Summers, housing prices have increased by as much as 20% since last year, leading to a true inflation rate in the double digits. Did you hear that? Democrats, leftists? According to Summers, housing prices have increased by as much as 20% since last year leading to a true inflation in rate in the double digits. This is something that a lot of people have been saying. The way they calculate inflation in the government is ridiculous. If you actually account for everything, inflation's actually in the double digits, and it has been for a long time. That's, that is actually true. Either the official indices are just wrong, or more likely three to four points of inflation from housing are coming in 2022, even if there's no further increase in rents or home prices. This effect far exceeds any benefit from lower energy or used car prices. And he sees no end in sight. My guess is, barring any a major recessionary or financial shock next fall, headline inflation will round to 5%, Summers deduce. We are beyond the Vietnam inflation, where the Vietnam inflation took us, but still have plenty of time to stop a late 1970s situation from developing if we have the will. Now, here's the real rub. And this is, this is what the takeaway from all of this. In comments made during a recent CNN interview, Summers predicted that the United States is poised to witness inflation of a kind we haven't seen in 30 years unless the Federal Reserve... Oh, come on. Unless... The Federal Reserve tapers its monetary stimulus. Tapers its monetary stimulus. I think it's fine. This, I'm quoting again. I think it's possible, but quite unlikely, that inflation will recede back to its normal 2% level without some significant change in the path we're now on, he said. I think the Fed has made a significant mistake in the approach it is taking by doubling down on the massive fiscal stimulus we had at the beginning of the year with really easy monetary policy. Like I was talking, like free money, throwing money on the economy. He 
here's the rub. If the Federal Reserve stops pumping the economy with just all this loose, easy money, we're going to have a recession. It's inevitable. That's why they have been so reluctant to do it for so long. It's because they know what's going to happen. We're going to have a recession. It's going to be bad. It's going to be really bad. It doesn't have to last a really long time if the government would just stay out of it and let the economy correct itself, but it's not going to be fun. It's not going to be pleasant. We have to take our medicine in this case. If our economy is really so good, as the Biden administration keeps saying, why does the Fed keep having to pump money into it? And why is it that the inevitable conclusion of this is if they stop doing it, that the economy is just going to go downhill really quickly and we're going to have a massive recession. How can the economy be good if that's the case? If you take your hand out of the cookie jar, all of a sudden, everything goes downhill. How, how could the economy be good if that's the case? Well, it's not. It's fiction. It's a house of cards built up on all this loose monetary policy that the Fed's been doing for years. And this is not a Republican, Democrat, left, right thing. They've been doing it across every administration. But we have to do it. We have to do it. We have no choice. We can't keep doing this. This will not last forever. And as soon as they do it, we're going to have a massive recession. But we have to go through the pain. There's no way uh, out. There's no way out. That's the only way to get the economy back into reality. If you, if you want to hear more about this from someone who's more authoritative than me, you need to check out Peter Schiff's work. Peter Schiff has done a lot of work uh, in his podcast and in his own life with in, on inflation and what the Fed's doing and so forth. He says the same thing. He's right. Check him out. Uh, you know, learn what, uh, hear what he's saying. Learn what he's saying, and um, you know, you'll recognize the truth of the matter. Anyway, that's it for today. Um, if you like what you heard, hit that subscribe button, leave a like on the video, uh, leave some comments. I'd love to hear what you think about this. Until next time, this is the Sovereign States. My name is Brian. See you then.